Hello, in this video we're going to discuss Walrus's Law. We're going to do a numerical example by using a two-person exchange economy. Walrus's Law states that the aggregate value of excess demands is zero at any set of prices. Let's look at the case where we have two different markets, the market for good X and the market for good Y. The price of good X multiplied by the excess demand for good X plus the price of good Y multiplied by the excess demand for good Y equals zero according to Walrus's law. If one market is in equilibrium, that is excess demand is zero, the other market must also be in equilibrium. So if the excess demand for good X is zero, then for this equation equals zero, it must mean that the excess demand for good Y is zero. If there is excess demand, say in market A, the value of the excess supply in market B equals the value of the excess demand in market A. If we have M different markets, Walrus Law states if M minus one markets are in equilibrium, then we know that the mth market must also be in equilibrium. All right, so we're going to set up our two-person exchange economy. Here's consumer one's utility for good X and good Y. The consumer's initial endowment, 10 units of good X and 2 units of good Y, deriving this person's budget constraint. So income equals the price of good X times the endowment of good X plus the price of good Y, good y times the endowment of good Y. Making those substitutions, we have the following. Doing a similar thing for the second consumer, we have the following. We're going to derive the demand for good X and good Y. I'm going to skip steps here. So in the interest of time, here is the demand for good X for consumer 1. Substituting in M subscript 1 for what we have on top here. Consumer 1's demand for good X. And doing a similar thing for good Y. We get consumer 1's demand for good Y. For consumer 2, consumer 2's demand for good X looks like this. And consumer 2's demand for good Y looks like this. So here are our demands for good X, consumer 1 and consumer 2. The aggregate good demand for good X. Just going to add these two equations up. and simplify. So this is our aggregate demand for good X. And doing the same thing now but for good Y. The aggregate demand for good Y then is as follows. The excess demand for good X will just be the quantity demanded minus the quantity supplied. And the quantity supplied of good X will be the initial endowments of that good X from consumer 1 plus that of consumer 2. So excess demand for good X is going to equal X minus the endowment of good X. So here is the aggregate demand for good X that we just solved. And minus 12 represents the total endowment of good X. If you recall, consumer 1 had 10 units of good X and consumer 2 had 2 units. The value of the excess demand for good X going to take the price of good X, multiply it by the excess demand for good X. So doing that, you get this equation right here. Doing a similar thing for good Y. The excess demand for good Y will be our aggregate demand for good Y minus the endowment of good Y. Making our substitution for our, our aggregate demand for good Y, we have this. And minus 12, if you recall, Consumer 1 had 2 units of Y to begin with, and Consumer 2 had 10. So that's where this minus 12 is coming from. In terms of the value of the excess demand for good Y, just the price of good Y times excess demand for good Y gives us this equation. So let's look at Walrus's Law then. It states that the value of the excess demand for good X plus the value of the excess demand for good Y will equal 0. Making our substitutions into that equation, 
And so let's pick any set of prices for price of good X and price of good Y. Let's let the price of good X equal one and the price of good Y equal two, making those substitutions into that above formula. And simplifying. So the excess demand for good X is six. And when we multiply it by the price of good X, one, get the value of the excess demand for good X at $6 here. And then two times the excess demand for good Y. So the excess demand for good Y is minus three. So we actually have a th surplus in the market for good Y. And if you multiply that two, the price of good Y times the negative excess demand or surplus, uh, we're going to get a sum here of zero, which is what Walrus Law predicts. Let's do another example. Let's try these prices here. Price of good X equals one, price of good Y equals one, making our substitutions. You'll notice here that the excess demand for good X is zero. And so if the excess demand for good X is zero in one market, and we're only dealing with two markets, it must be zero in the other market. And indeed it is. Okay, that's it. I will stop here.